Hi everyone and welcome to the video on section 7.2. This video is going to be covering directions, direction fields and Euler's method. So um, there's two pieces here. One of these, which you know we'll see these in just a second, is a graphical method for trying to understand solutions to a differential equation, which we talked about what that means last time to be a solution. And the other one is a numeric or numerical method for trying to understand these solutions to a differential equation. So we talked about last time we can get a function solution and just see that it's a solution. But that's not always the easiest thing to do. So sometimes instead of that, instead of just saying, like, I'm going to go find the function that solves this differential equation, will instead say, can we learn about any solution graphically or numerically? So we're going to go over both of these today. And we're going to start with direction fields. And the way that you should think about direction fields is you just have to remember that a differential equation, so a differential equation is all about describing change. So this is all about change. So remember, if a function solves the differential equation, then that means that the differential equation will describe the change of that function. So we have a differential equation given right up here. I'm going to rewrite it so we can stop looking at that big paragraph of words. So here we go. Here's our differential equation. This is telling me that if you give me an x and a y, I can tell you how my function should change. Right? So just try it. Pick out an x and a y. So, you know, st always start as simple as you can. So let's pick out an x and a y. How about 0, 0? Okay, plug that into the differential equation. You're going to get y prime equals 0 minus 0 plus 1, which is 1. I'm telling you that for y as a function of x, okay, and I'm not saying that our solution has to be y as a function of x. It, it could be some curve that can't be described this way. But at least locally, if we think of the solution as y as a function of x, then I know from the work we just did right here that the derivative with respect to x is 1. I know that that's exactly going to be the slope of the tangent line. That's what this is showing in this picture. See how there's this little line here? That's showing a little piece of a tangent line that whatever solution I have, if it hits this point zero, 0, it's going to have this slope here, this little tangent line touching the curve. So it's giving direction on where the solution curve should go. And if you think of this picture that way, I don't think it's too bad. Just put yourself somewhere. Anywhere on this picture you want to put yourself. Here you are. Right here. That's you. You've got some legs and some arms. Okay, now where are you going to go? Well, you're going to go wherever this direction field tells you to go. This is the slope, so that means that you're going down. So if you start moving to the right, because that's what, remember, this derivative is saying small change in x, but positive change. So as you start to move this way, what are you going to do? Where's your y value? You're going to fall. You're going to go down. So you can think then of a solution curve yourself going down here. You're going to be going down. And then what you have to do is just keep reevaluating. Then what's going to happen? So you get down here. Well, look at these, these um, like tiny little tangent lines. They're still telling you to go down. Now, maybe not quite as fast, right? Because these are closer to vertical, and these are starting to, as we get closer down here, these are starting to not get quite so extreme. So then you're going to slow down, but still be going down, right? And then these are still the same thing happening. And you get over here, and again, you're not going down quite as fast, but you're still going down. And then you're getting down here, and then, oh, you're still going down, but really it's starting to slow. And then just keep following your directions. Oh. Am I going up now? I'm going up. OK. And then I'm going up, and I'm going up. And you're going to just keep following these. And you're going up, and you're going up. And just from that, look, we have the solution curve. Now, it's not perfect, of course. Uh, but that's the general idea, is that I can pick a point in here, 
and follow what the differential t uh, equation tells me to do. It's giving directions. Just at every single step, follow the directions. That's what this picture is trying to do. It's trying to show you, if I put myself anywhere, how I should flow, right? where I should go. You can picture it like water flowing. Right? If you put yourself somewhere, you're going to flow along these lines. Right? So think about that. That's so valuable. I think it's really not bad to see a ton from this. You know, like you know, you might look at a differential equation and be like, just give me the solution. But look at how much I can get out of this. First things first, I see by looking at this picture, there seems like I could put myself somewhere and just kind of get stuck on this line. Right? This line, the straight line seems to be kind of special. I, I put myself on here and I'm not moving off. I'm just getting on this line. And then look at the rest of these. The rest of these solutions are tending towards that line. Start yourself over here. You're going to go down and to the right, and you're, you're moving towards the line, but never quite touching it. Now put yourself over here. What are you doing? You're going to be going up towards the line. So look at all that structure that we can get out of these by just looking at this picture. And, and that's the goal of the direction field, is to really try to describe what kinds of functions you should be getting when you, if you were able to solve explicitly for a function. So whew, we're going up here, and we're just staying on this line here. Okay, So you know, hopefully that's not too terrible to kind of play around with. If you wanted to go, you know, if, if this line is intriguing you a little bit, and we still don't have a, a way to solve these, really. Like a, a couple of them we can, but not all. So if you're interested in this line, this is the line y equals x. Now, check it. I'm going to pretend that's a solution, just so we can see. It's got a, so it's, remember, it has to satisfy the differential equation. y prime for this is 1, right? So plug it in. 1 equals x minus y plus 1. OK, so is this true? Well, guess what? y is x. So guess what happens? This is 0. 1 equals 1. Woohoo! So this straight line is a solution to this differential equation. Then you also should see there's going to be a bunch of solutions up here that all kind of act the same. And then there's solutions down here that all kind of act the same, but seem to be kind of different than the ones here and the straight line. So just from this picture, it's almost like I see three different families. A bunch of curves down here that are fairly similar, some curves up here that are fairly similar, and then a straight line. That's the three families of solutions. And it, what, what we can do is when we solve this differential equation later, we can see that, yes, you do get three families of solutions here. Similar, when I say that, you might be like, what do you mean? Well, remember from the last video, so as, as a little side note, this like family idea. Remember from the last video, we had a problem where we had the solutions e to the 1 half x and e to the negative x. Right? We had these, these are families of solutions because if you look at their pictures, they're pretty different, right? But they still both solved, and we saw that not just those, but multiples of those also solved. So these would be two families of solutions. So that's what I mean when I say that, connecting back to an example from before. Okay, so there you go. That's a direction field. So like I had said, we can see you can put solutions in here. And the Mathematica notebook that goes along with this, I'll post so you can see what that looks like on, black, uh, on Blackboard. But you can see how these are all different solutions, and they just follow. See, this is telling me go down. I'm going down, and then it's like, oh, turn around, go back up. Down, and then these lines are saying, all right, now your slope should be increasing. And then you can follow this one as well. So kind of cool. You can fit these in here. OK, now the second thing, if we don't want to just look at the picture, we want to try to actually you know, get a little bit more specific, get some numbers in, not just drawings, then we can use something called, called Euler's method. Uh, Euler's method, really cool um, idea. 
just based off of calc one stuff and just based off of what we said above. So let's go back above real quick. What did we say here? We said, okay, at any point, like let's say I'm right here and I want to know what the solution is going to do, like one of these three curves. What do I do? Well, I follow what the differential equation tells me to do. So what Euler said was, okay, well, so I can do that. How do I do that? Start here, take the line that has this slope and extend it a little bit. Okay, now stop. What do I do now? Well, I know where I'm supposed to be going, right? Because the differential equation tells me that I should be going up again. Okay, follow the differential equation again. Okay, follow the differential equation again. Go a little bit. Okay, go a little bit and, and then let the differential equation tell you where to go. Okay, go again. Okay, go again. So that's what Euler's method is, is it's saying, I can start somewhere. I need to start somewhere. The differential equa equation tells me directions. All right, let me just follow the directions. So that's the idea of it. The differential equation tells you how to move. So follow its directions for a little bit because the directions are changing fast. So don't go too far following those directions because after you've moved a little bit, the directions might change. And so you have to ask again, what are the directions? Okay, follow that. What are the directions? Follow that. That's it, that's the idea. So let's actually go like think about how we're gonna do that. Okay, so here is how this works. The idea is based on linearization from Calc 1. Now remember, linearization was a fancy way to talk about the tangent line, right? So all we do again is we start at a point, okay, we're here. So the solution curve is going to hit that point. Then what we do is we say, okay, I know how I'm supposed to move using the slope of the tangent line, which is given by the differential equation. So, okay, how do I move there? I just go along how the differential equation tells me to. So how do I do that? Well, what, what I really have to think about is at this point, I have an X and a Y, and I have a slope of the tangent line. So in order to think about how to move here along this tangent line, I just have to make the line, right? Make the line. So that's this y equals L of x. Just, you know, you have a point, we'll call this x1 and y1, uh, and you have a slope. So y equals m x minus x1 plus y1. So this is the blue line right here. So how do I figure out, you know, where to move? Well, plug in some new x value along this line and figure out where the y value is. And that'll tell me where to move. So what it's up to us to do is figure out this right here. We have to figure out how far in x do we want to move following this tangent line. And what you should think is, and you could go back up to this picture, or actually just do it here, if I, if I go too far in x following only one direction, it's not going to be that good. Watch this. Here's our, my example. So let's be here. Let's say I want to use Euler's method and I want to go here. So I'm going to extend this, this tangent line, this like little mini tangent line you see here. So let's do our best to extend this out. So Euler, Euler's method says, you know, follow the tangent line for a little bit. But if I follow it for too long, like let's say I'm here and I want to go all the way now to x equals negative 1. So what do I mean by that? I mean I'm going to follow this tangent line all the way until x equals negative 1. But you know that's not good because really the solution curve does not decrease like this the whole time. Look at what happens. The solution curve does start decreasing that way but then starts to kind of turn around, right? If I don't, if I pick too big of a jump to do here, from here to here, then the directions might change pretty radically from the original directions I had. So what Euler figured out was, okay, I can't take too big of a jump here. If I take a smaller jump, then I will more accurately be able to follow the solution curve. 
Hopefully that sounds pretty familiar, right? We are taking these approximations and we figured out that the smaller step we take, the better the approximation. To me that sounds like the limit definition, right, of a derivative, how we define the limit definition of an integral, arc length, volumes of revolution, all of these are calculus ideas. So hopefully that's not too bad to see that, yeah, we've done that idea before. I can't get the solution perfectly, but I can approximate. And the more things I do in my approximation, in this case it's steps taken, the better it will be. So we don't want to have huge jumps like this from all the way from this x, like negative 2-ish, all the way to 1, that's two, negative 1, that's too big of a jump. So what we're going to have to do is say, all right, let's only jump a small amount in x, and then let's figure out how to kind of do that. So once we're down here, x minus x1, this here is going to be our, our step, which will define right at the beginning of the problem. It will always have the same step as we go through this. The way you can think of this is kind of like your delta x, right, from from calc 1 and stuff we've done again in this class so this is like how far you want to step and then m is telling you the slope so okay you want to step a little bit in x m is going to tell you okay well this is how far up you're going to get and then plus y1 well that's where I was so you, hopefully you can kind of see from this picture what's happening here I'm taking a step of 0 0.5 0 to 0 0.5 I'm starting at 1, and I'm going up based on the slope. Where did I get the slope from? From the differential equation. Okay, And we're going to do an example of this in just a second. But hopefully you see, look, I've cut in half my step size. 0 to a half, now 0 to 0.25. And look, this approximation is more closely following the curve than this one. There's some more space here. This one, you know, you, you take too big of a step, and you're pretty far away. So as I increase the number of steps, which decreases the step size, again, AKA, remember, just like as I decrease the width of my rectangles, I had made more rectangles. Same idea. I'm going to do a better job here. And so this is a very formulaic process. Okay, So we're going to do a few uh, iterations of this with this differential equation. Okay. So again, just like this picture, we're going to start y of 0 equals 1. So just as a reminder, this means we're going to start at the point 0, 1. Okay? We are going to take a step size of h equals 0. 0.25. So that's this distance here. I'm going to choose it to be 0. 0.25. So that looks, we're going to recreate this. Okay. We want to get all the way to y equals 1. So we want to try to estimate or sorry, not y equals 1, y of 1, using this method. So here's the way it looks like. And setting up a table is really your best bet. So how this works is you can do a column of x's, a column of where you get in y's. You, you can change what kind of columns you do in here. This is going to be your slope. You can think of this as like the slope, m, of the tangent line. And then this is just an intermediate step where I take my slope and multiply it by my step size. So right away, we just plug in n equals 0 is your start. So this is your start. So I start at 0, 1. Now get me the slope. OK, the slope here is going to be given by the differential equation. So that will be y prime equals 0 minus 1 plus 1, which equals, so 0 minus 1 plus 1, which equals 0. So at this exact value, the slope is actually 0. At 0 comma 1, the slope will be 0. Anything times 0, although let's write it out, 0.25 is my step size times, right? And then 0 is my slope here, OK? That's just 0. So then what's my next step? Well, the next step, and I'll write it down here for you, is the next y value. That's what this says, 
next y value is the previous y value plus your slope that you get from here times your step size. That's why we're doing these. So in this case, y1 is what happened. We had, we were at 1 plus, we didn't move anywhere. Okay, so put that down. So in this case, this is a, a, a little bit of a weird one. We didn't move anywhere because the slope was 0. But that's okay, we'll move somewhere in a second. What's my next x value? Well, step size h is 0.25, which means I'm going to go to 0.25. In this column, you can actually fill out right away. Take another step. Take another step. Take your last step. Right, Because that's what we want, right? We want to estimate y of 1. Okay, how do I figure out what's going to happen at 0.5? Well, plug in and get the slope. So the slope, again, is just given by the differential equation right here. My x value is 0.25 minus my y is 1 plus 1 equals 0.25. Okay, and then my step size times this would be 0 0.25 times 0.25, okay? So that's 1 quarter times 1 quarter, that's 1 16th. So this is how much up I'm going up. So then how do I figure out what this one is going to be? It's going to be, again, the previous y value plus how much I went up. So this is going to be 1 plus 1 over 16, which equals... 17 over 16. Okay, so that's my new y value. Okay, so how then do I get to the next step here? Well, take the slope. So we're going to do this because we're running out of room here. So this slope, and, and we'll do a little color organization. This slope is going to be right here. Okay, so that's again, our differential equation was x minus y plus 1. So x minus y plus 1, okay? So now is a good time to start using the calculator, although we could do this fraction. It's really not the worst in the world, but it's, you know, calculators are good. So 0 0.5 minus 17 over 16 plus 1. So that's going to give me a slope of 0 0.4375. Okay, now I'm going to multiply that by my step size, which again, step size does not change. 4375, so multiply by 0 0.25 times 0.25. That gives me 0 0.109. 375. Okay, that's how much I go up by. So how do I figure out what my next y value is? It's take your previous plus take this one, 0.109375. So we're going to plug that into our calculator, plus 17 over 16, and we get well, let's actually just erase this so we have more room. So we end up getting 1.171875. Okay, so we're steadily still going up. Now I get to just do it again, get the slope. So let's do it. We'll do a little star here. So that's going to be plug in your x value, 0.75 minus... Plug in your y value. Again, this is totally, we're doing this just because this is what the differential equation says, plus 1. All right, so we get 0 0.75 minus 1.171875 plus 1. That gives me 0 0.578125. 0 0.578125. That's my new slope. 
Okay, so then this step tells me do h times that. So again, all I have to do is multiply by 0.25. So that's going to be 0. Actually, we, we can do this in black now. 0 0.1445 That's how much I now go up. So how do I figure out, you know, what's this last y value? I take my previous and I add to this. So let's do that. Plus 1.171875. That gives me a final y value of 1.31640625. This is what I think y of 1 should be. So if I was able to actually solve this differential equation and plug in one, I should get something about right there. That's my guess. Now, is this going to be right? No. We're going to be off because this is an approximation and it's, you know, only took a couple steps, right? So it's a lot better if we take many, many more steps, which luckily we have computers to do, which is awesome. But this process you know, it's not too bad, it's time consuming, right? And you gotta be careful not to leave off a digit, mess up where you are, you gotta kinda really pay attention to that. Uh, but again, the whole process itself is just follow the tangent line a little bit, okay? Stop after you've gone, in this case, 0.25 and x, reevaluate what's your derivative, okay? Use that to figure out how far up or down you're going, okay, then go that much, all right, and then stop, reevaluate. What's the direction? Okay, how much am I going up or down? Do that, and then repeat, repeat, repeat. Okay, so I hope that's not too bad. Uh, we can see down here kind of how to do this. Here was our estimate. This is with only four total steps, but we can get more and more and more steps, which again relates to smaller and smaller and smaller step size, and we can get a better and better approximation. Okay, um, so there you go, that's Euler's method. Now, numerical methods are very, very common, especially in things like Mathematica, right? So Mathematica uses numerical approximations to do lots of things, including um, evaluate differential equations like we're doing, solutions to them. Of course, there are more complicated uh, better approximations, but really many of them come from something very similar to this idea. Uh, and so if it's something you're interested in, I can definitely talk to you about it. Pretty cool, different stuff. You get better errors with less steps, things like that, which is of course better for a computer to do. The less steps it has to take in general, the better. But yeah, Euler's method does a, a, a good job. Okay, so let's go through here and, and keep kind of try working through this. So we have a direction field for a differential equation, y prime equals x cos pi y. So that's this picture. That's our direction field. Kind of a, a crazy looking one. All right. So this says, sketch the graphs of solution that satisfy the given initial conditions. So this problem is all about trying to see if we can just kind of follow the, the picture. So let's do a couple of these. How about this first one? 0, comma, 0. Okay. So again, just follow. Where should I go? This whole line has 0 slope. So I want to start going this way. Then th as I go this way, I start to see that they start going up. So as soon as I hit this point, I should start going up and try to follow the slope there. And then this point, I'm still going up. Okay, and I'm still going up. Okay, but then it seems like as I go right more, it starts to slow down. So I'm going to slow down, slow down, and then I start to just approach this line. Boom. So that and that go together. Okay, what about this one? 0, 0,5. Let's do that one in this color. All right. So let's zoom in here a bit more. Oh, where'd you go? Just kidding, it's right here. So 0, 0,5, that's this one. Okay. So what does it want us to do? Well, this has a slope 0, so just start moving. 
Oh, slope zero. Okay, slope zero. I'm sure it'll change at some point. Nope, slope zero. Slope zero. Slope zero. Okay, that one wasn't too bad. What's the next one? So let's go find the next one. Zero, one. Okay, let's go do zero, one. And we'll do this in, we like uh, purple. So zero comma one is here. So it starts me off like this, but then it's taken me down. Okay, so I'm going down and then down and then down and then down and then that down starts to kind of ease up a little bit more and boom. So going down. This one's going up, this one's going down. And then 1.6 was the next one. Okay, 1.6 was the next one. We'll do that one in, uh, we can do that one in green. Okay, 1.6 is here. What's this one do? So this is just flat, so flat, and then up a little bit, and then still up, and then oh, gain in speed, gain in speed, and there I go. All right, so those just keep going on. You can draw little arrows that says keep going. So I'm just showing you a picture of this, but this, you know, these keep going, keep going, getting closer. And then this first one keeps going up, getting closer to that. Boom. So there you go. We've got pictures of possible solutions. Now what I want you to see here is there are these kind of like weird breaks in this picture. And this is not coincidence. So focus on the sections of this. So what do I mean by that? Well, what did we notice with this first one? It just kind of was like straight, straight, straight the whole way through. Okay, there's another one of these. Just kind of straight, straight, straight all the way through. And what you'll notice is all other solutions are trapped in here. What do I mean trapped? They never break through this. So this one here, remember this green one we did? It's going up, shoots away, okay? Over here, look what happens. I decrease fast and then I have to slow down, slow down, slow down, and I will never actually break through here. It's almost like these, these strange, never changing straight line equations, right? They either kind of bring other equations, equations towards them or repel them, but you never actually touch. So you can see that here too, right? Follow this purple one backwards. I'm gonna go down, 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 and then again, I'm just gonna approach this line but never touch it. So these here have a special name. They are called equilibrium solutions. And they have this really interesting um, property that they can break up your picture that you have, your, uh, your, your slope field, your direct field, they can break up that into sections. And then all of the solutions in those sections tend to have similar shapes, similar um, properties to them, kind of act differently than the other, the other sections. And you can't cross between. So this is gonna be the purple section and all these curves will be very similar to this purple one and you can kind of see that try drawing out some more this is the green and they're all going to have a very similar shape and then this uh, is the black section and all of these curves in this section will also have a very similar shape so one thing to do right away for a problem is see if you can find equilibrium solutions you might be like well how do you do that right now how do we figure this out well what's special about these how did i draw that line so quick it was because the slope was always zero. Aha, the slope is always zero. So I know how to talk about the slope of any of these curves. It's the differential equation. So let's write this down. Y prime equals X cos pi Y. Okay, that's supposed to describe how I should change, right? how any solution should change at any given x, y. Well, how do I figure out equi equilibrium solutions? Well, this should happen when y prime is zero, because the derivative is zero. Zero equals cos, sorry, x cosine 
pi y. Anytime you're multiplying two numbers and you get them 0, break it into parts. x equals 0 when, well, x equals 0. OK, so all right. And then y, the next thing that will happen is cosine pi y equals 0. This one we have to think about, you know, just come back here. When is this going to be true? When's cosine 0? Well, it's going to be 0. Remember, whenever your x value on this circle is 0. So here and here. And then, of course, anytime you wrap back around this circle. So that's the same thing as saying pi y equals, and this is pi over 2, or this one's 3 pi over 2, or you can keep wrapping it around plus pi over 2, plus pi over 2, plus pi over 2, minus pi over 2, minus pi over 2, all of those. Well, let's just do this first one for a second. Pi y equals pi over 2 is the same thing as y equals 1 half. And boom, there it is. Do this one, do the solution, y equals 3 halves. And boom. It's going to happen again when you go another 2 pi. Up here, there's going to be another equilibrium. And then down here, below, there's going to be another equilibrium because you can go around the circle the other way, negative 2 pi. OK, so that's not bad. So these are telling you these lines. This is giving you this entire section, this whole line, vertical line, of these zero slopes. So. Hopefully, that's not too bad to kind of see that. Our equilibrium solutions just come out of setting this equal to 0, figuring out these y equal function of x values that get us there. So these y equal what's, and a ton of them. So here you go. Equilibrium solutions will break things up. Or as I wrote it, equilibrium solutions, which is not correct. So OK, hopefully that's not too bad. All the things you can do, like this is a crazy amount to get from taking no steps to solving. Look at all of the things that we can get from this. It's, it's a lot. It's pretty cool. OK, so in this last example, we're going to be going through and doing another Euler's method. So again, we can just kind of set the same table up, but we have a bunch of it we can set up right away. 1 is our first x value, 0 is our first y value, and then a step size of 0.5. So that's 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3. And then we can't fill these y's in yet because we have to approximate them by using what remember is this is our little slope of our tiny tangent line we're going to walk along. And then this is the actual amount that we go up or down. So this is going to be the change in y. So this is over that step we're going to take. How much do we actually move up or down? So OK, remember how we do this. We get this slope by plugging in here, right? So then I take my 1 and my 0 and I plug in. So this first one here will be y prime equals, OK, plug y in, that's 0 minus 2 times x, which is negative 2. Boom. OK, then I multiply that by my step size. 0 0.5 times negative 2 is, this is a negative 1. OK, so what is this telling me? It's telling me you started at the point 1 comma 0. Take a step of size 0 0.5 to the right, go down 1. So this was me. I went a step of 0.5. I went now down 1, because that's what this says to do. OK, let's do the derivative again. So it's y prime equals y minus 2 times x. OK, so we do this. This would be negative 3. Negative 1 is negative 4. All right. And then I do my step size times this little slope. So that's 0 0.5 times negative 4 gives me negative 2. So what's the saying now? Take a step of 0.5. You were here previously.
go down to. There you go. Okay, let's keep going, right? So then I'm going to, again, get this derivative, y prime. What was it? Plug in my y value. That's negative 3 minus 2 times my x value. Now I am, I'm getting to 2, or sorry, at 2. Okay, do this. This would be negative 7. And that goes in here. Then it's take a step. This is the slope of the tangent line I'm stepping down. This is going to be how much I change by. Where was I? Negative 3. Go down 3.5. That gives me negative 6.5. Do the slope. y prime equals plug in your y value. Negative 6.5 minus 2 times. I'm now at 2.5. Okay. So that's going to be negative 6.5 minus 5. That's negative 11.5. Okay. Now it's take the step along that little tangent line times your slope will give me my change in y. We're going to have to go to the calculator here. 0.5 times negative 11.5 is negative 5.75. So what is this telling me? It's telling me you were at negative 6.5. Go down this much. So negative 6.5 minus 5.75 gets me now down to negative 12.25. That's my new y value. OK. And I've done it. Right? This was the end. This was my y sub 4. I have figured out that the solution to this differential equation at x equals 3 is about negative 12.25. There you go. Boom. Once you get that, that how to take a step in the table once, you, you know, it's not too bad to do. You just, you know, practice it a little bit um, just because it can be a lot to keep all of this, you know, in your head. You may even want to do a table with more columns if, you know, some of these steps are like I'm taking the step of adding this to the previous y to get to the next one. You might want to make a column that is the change in y plus your previous y. You know, I don't know. Whatever way works for you is fine with me. So, there you go. We've did we've done our approximation. So two things again in this video. What did we do? We looked at the direction um, that the differential equation was telling us to go, the direction or slope field. We could draw a picture with little tiny tangent lines at each point giving us a direction to go. And then we can actually try to approximate values of our, our solution by just following those little tangent lines. The shorter step we take in x, the better approximation will be. All right, so get some practice with this. Of course, ask questions when you have them, and I'll see you in the next video.